Hey, welcome back friends. Today I'm continuing my series on the German-made forestry tools made by the Helco company. And they've been very popular in Germany for years and years and years, as you can see, since 1844. And somewhere recent, which I would say like in the last five years, possibly they've come to the US and they have a uh, distribution place in California I believe so if someone knows anything different please comment down below to correct me uh, but they're now selling their forestry tools in the US and I've seen this particular splitter right here it's a heavy log splitter I've seen this for a couple years and it's a little pricey as you can see let me just take the sheath off Put in my pocket. Alright, as you can see, this is just one magnificent looking tool. It's almost like there's no expenses that were spared making this. I'd say it's a opulent design. That's not a word I've ever really used for describing a log splitter, but this thing. It's amazing, it's high carbon steel, C45. And let's take a closer look. We'll go through the specs of this. I don't wanna to talk too long. I think I wanna just put this into action. I haven't even swung this into wood yet. So you're gonna see it the first time on camera with me testing out this heavy log splitter. So let's take a closer look and we'll go through the specs. Heavy log splitter number 10058. This has a 35.4 inch handle. And the head weight, is 5.1 pounds. It's more with this additional hardware here. The total weight, 8.5 pounds. And I'll just tell you a few features of this. It has a patented screw system and it's for easy interchangeable blades. And I'll just go to another picture here a second so you can see what options you have to switch this out. Take a look at the different blades, the universal axe, splitting axe, Scandinavian splitting axe, heavy universal axe, heavy log splitter, and here is the patented screw system. As you can see, this has a steel overstrike protector right here, built in. And it has, like I mentioned, C45 high grade carbon steel. It's drop forge, heat treated, and oil hardened. So this does come with a one ounce um, thing of Axe Guard. It's a protective oil, a little bottle. And you just wipe this down, or this is what I recommend doing. When you're done using this, wipe it down, get all the moisture off, and then just take a little bit of that oil and just lightly coat it to keep it from rusting. Because high grade carbon steel will rust, but it's, um, it's kind of like a perfect balance. That's what they try to find. So it's the steel is not too sharp where it becomes brittle and then they don't want it too soft either where you have to sharpen it all the time. So this should be like a perfect balance between those two things. All right, just see, so give you an idea what it looks like from all around. It's pretty heavy. So one interesting thing, when you're holding the handle and you let go of the handle, it will just twist down so it's something that some other malls I have might have like a little more of a counterbalance to them. This one just is heavy on that end right there. Okay, so the handle, let's go over that. It's American Hickory. Let's see where, yeah, you can see that. And it's handmade in Switzerland. It's called an ergonomic handle. It has a little bit of a curve to it, and which they say provides the perfect balance. And it has a lightly lacquered handle, lacquered finish. And the sheath, premium leather, handmade in the USA. All right, so let's test this out. Okay, so if you've seen some of my other videos, you may have seen me using a tire chopping block. I'm not gonna use that for the sake of this video. I want you to be able to see how the wood splits apart and not have it blocked by the tire. So I'm swinging this for the very first time. 
And at the moment, I don't have any real big rounds to split. I have to go and do some logging in the woods pretty soon. So we'll go with what I have and see how this works. All right. Get a feel for it. Just kind of a medium swing. <laughs> wow. That just popped apart. That's amazing. Okay, so here's what I split. Um, I didn't mention, this is a piece of black cherry and it's relatively short, it's straight grained. So we're gonna have to go to something a little bit tougher. All right, let's take just a couple easy swings and finish splitting this. This is such a heavy maul splitter that you just kinda wanna go full tilt. It's almost a little challenging to go on a slow speed. All right, let's find something a little more challenging. It just pops apart. All right, come on. All right, this one's gonna be a little challenging. It's not like that it's real wide but it's pretty long. It's probably over 20 inches long. Wow. That's amazing. All right, I don't really split a lot of pine or spruce, but I have to have some leftovers from a piece of white pine. I use this more for campfires, not really my wood stove. This one has always been pretty challenging. I'm not sure with it being like 20 degrees out, if it's frozen, it'll pop more. But it has a lot of limbs, a lot of gnarly stuff coming off of it. So let's just give it a shot and see what happens. The nice thing with this wide wedge, it doesn't get stuck in there. Oh yeah. All right, here's a piece of red oak. Not a real big piece. It's probably 18 inches long or so, so it's a little trickier to split for that reason. Oh yeah. All right, so this one right here is what I would say is the trickiest of the mall split. It's where you have couple limbs like it's taking a fork like that they're very tough to split even in a hydraulic wood splitter they do some weird things just the way that these two areas are intersecting and the grain weaves together if I can see a line I'm going to try to hit it right there let me turn this a little bit to my advantage all right I'm going to try to try to fall right there see if I can do it I got a nice split going. And the way this wedge, it splits out, it, it flares out real fast. I'm thinking this shouldn't get stuck in the wood too easy, the way it wedges that far. If this were a long and narrow type of blade, then it would get stuck in the wood. So far, it comes out rather well. Pretty easy. All right, try this again. Oh, I missed my spot by about an inch. I'm gonna just keep working that a minute. Yeah, I'll go from this angle. We're here. I hit right where I want to hit. I've got a really good split going now. It should take an easy swing. There it goes. flying apart I don't want to swing too hard. If I had the tire I would swing harder. All right almost all the way through. Boom! My friends this concludes my video review of the Vario 2000. This is one awesome tool. It's something that I didn't want to ever put down. I just kept looking for other pieces of wood to challenge me. 
with or to challenge it with and this just shines through every time it's amazing this is something that I see myself having for a lifetime so anyways if you find this interesting please get a thumbs up help support my channel if you've tried one I'd like to know your thoughts and all right that's it my friends thanks for watching see you next time all right friends if you want to see some other helpful tools being reviewed by me please click over to the right on those boxes I have a hatchet and another mall that I'm going to have for you to see check those out and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet hit that red button down below and check me out on Twitter and Instagram thanks for watching my friends enjoy